thank you so much for attending. We're very excited to have you all here. And without further delay, I want to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Jonathan Godfrey, Senior Lecturer in Statistics at Massey University, who is joining us extremely early in the morning from New Zealand. Thank you so much, Jonathan. He is going to give our keynote presentation on why this topic is so critical. Welcome, Jonathan. Uh, well, good afternoon for you and um, good almost morning for me. Um, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if the two coffees were enough or whether I should have just stayed up all night. Anyway, we'll find out. Um, I'm currently employed as a senior lecturer in statistics, um, and I, to my knowledge, uh, was the first totally blind person to ever be given a job as a full-time lecturer in statistics. Um, there were other people who stayed so long in academia that they ended up uh, losing their sight and um, some kept their job, others didn't. Uh, but to my knowledge, I'm, I'm the first person who was ever um, uh, taken up as a blind person and brought into an academic statistics department. Um, about this time, 20 years ago, I was supposed to be finishing my PhD. And like um, most PhD students, I was having a very good time in life um, with everything else and um, not too much frustrations with the PhD itself. And perhaps one of the first frustrations and the major frustration that's relevant for this uh, discussion is that in order to complete a PhD, we all had to write a thesis. And when I started that process, I had uh, no way as a blind person to independently create an equation that I could read. I came to the world of LaTeX, um, as did all the other postgrad students around me, and I found that I could create an equation, but I still couldn't read it. And so I ended up reading a lot of raw LaTeX, the raw LaTeX source that my uh, colleagues were using. If I could ever get a file from an author on uh, and be able to read their work, it was all done by reading LaTeX in its raw form. So LaTeX was an amazing savior for me. It gave me an opportunity. It gave me an opportunity to write a thesis alongside my peers. It didn't give me, however, any improvement in the ability to read anyone else's work or for that matter, read my own work. I obviously completed the PhD and all the other good things that you're supposed to do as an academic in today's world. And over the last 20 odd years, I have ended up having discussions with people about what it is that makes something accessible. What it is that can you know give something the tick of accessibility. And I found that I rejected many of the notions that were being put forward by fellow blind people about what was accessible because I had set the bar so much higher than they had. And so I ended up having what I consider to be a bit of a, a gold standard, a utopian, idealistic framework for what access actually is for me and others. And I put my idea together and I shared it with a uh, an email list of um, people who were interested in mathematics for blind people. And I was hoping to get feedback and I didn't get anyone's contributions to change my gold standard. And my gold standard said, it's not good enough that I can create uh, content that I can't read. It's not good enough for me to be able to consume someone else's content I have to actually be able to do both. I have to be able to read anything created using the tools that I am using, both 
so that I can create it independently and so that I can consume it independently. Now, the full version can be shared with people um, uh, and you can read it for yourself and, and wallow in it. Um, it. It, in the end, has got so much more in my gold standard that is quite heavily loaded um, and, and it's not really going to suit a discussion right now. But the two features, create and consume, produce and consume, if you will, In the end, in 2023, I am using HTML as my outcome format for consumption for everything I'm doing. I'm doing that because the document that I give to my students is the same document that I'm reading. I, by choosing HTML as my output format, have put myself on the same playing field as my students or anyone who wants to read work that I am creating. Now, obviously, this isn't quite going to be the case for many journal articles that I would be submitting. Um, but if I can read something in HTML and I can have the confidence that the PDF version of that same content is practically the same, maybe the pagination is a little bit different. But if it's practically the same, then the message that I am trying to convey to my audience is able to be read by me and confirmed as easily as it is going to be read by that audience. And that's my hope. Twenty twenty two, just last year, so almost twenty years after I was given a job as an academic. 2022 was the first year of my adult life where I did not depend on employing sighted people to help me complete my job. This is because we are using tools that are producing content that I can easily consume. We are making HTML instead of PDF that I can easily read. I'm now able to read an increasing number, number of journal publications because publishers are making the articles available in um, HTML and in their PDF. I'm able to read my students' work because they are supplying me with perfectly accessible HTML that I can read. In the end, 2022, was the first year of my life where I marked all of my students' work independently. My conclusion is that because we have increased accessibility, because I can do things for myself, I am actually more employable today in 2023 than I was 20 years ago when I was actually given a job as a lecturer. Accessibility is no longer the pipe dream that it was back then. It is a reality. It is possible. I know it's possible because I'm doing it. I understand that it's difficult for others who do not yet have the tools and if you don't have the tools, something is impossible. My hope is that everyone who engages with this forum today is going to walk away wanting to know what small changes they need to make in their lives that will have a profound impact on the educational aspirations and the employment prospects for literally thousands of blind people already coming through universities today. You can play your part. It will be small, but it will be profound. Thank you for your time.